All right, guys, welcome to another, the second uh, edition of a, a little Sports Grid Spike Week crossover. Um, of course, again, I'm joined by Davis Maddock. Every time you, you have your podcast intro down so, like, down pat so well that anytime I ever say, like, oh, I'm here with Davis Maddock, I want to say at Davis Maddock on Twitter, you know, like, I, it's like you've ingrained it in, into my brain with the, the the podcast intro. I almost catch myself say, you know, just now just saying that. Yeah, I mean, every every show I do, you know, um, Davis Maddock, of course, you guys can follow me on Twitter at <laughs> Davis Maddock. Let's get into X, Y, or Z. Like, I just like, mm -hmm. I can do it. Like, sometimes I will, uh, because I, I try to put the tape cast out on Wednesdays. And, and um, a lot of the times I'm lazy and I don't, I like, I might have the recording done, but I don't have the intro recorded until, you know, 1030 or whatever. And I'm getting ready to do TV because we do TV every day and I'll be, we'll be doing our sound checks and our, our everything for TV and I'll unplug my mic, plug it into my laptop and record. And like, I can, I can record the intro to the podcast while doing like six other things. Cause I just have it <laughs> so dialed in, in the back of my brain. Right. That's so it's so funny. That's it's one of the few things in like this space. It's like Levitan's intro, like I like, you know, that's like forever ingrained in my brain. There's a couple of those. And it's I think it's probably a really sad sign that yours is you can find me on Twitter at Davis Maddock is ingrained in my brain, but you know, such such is life. So anyway, we were talking a little bit before the show, and I think one thing that doesn't get like as much attention, and it, it probably should, it's kind of like DFS, like contest selection or bankroll management right people kind of talk about it but like it's it's actually probably a lot of like disingenuous uh touting about it uh you know whether it's on twitter or whatever but in best ball now like we do have multiple different sites like i mostly talk about the three you know kind of that have mobile apps basically that you can draft from your phone but there's even ffpc and 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 more than just that right i mean even fanduel has like 12 team leagues or whatever that are, are actually probably the softest thing that exists. But well, yeah, if I was grinding 12 man leagues, I think I, if I, which I have not, which by the way, yeah. we have we don't talk about that stuff at all. Like mm -hmm. here on my show on ship chasing, like we, like we, we kind of have biffed it. I think this off season, yeah. I think I should. And Pete does them because Pete does um, like his randomizer shows and things. So yeah. I think he's drafted more of them. I've probably drafted like five just straight up 12 man leagues or whatever, which is like, that's gotta be a leak because you know, if, if uh, you know, CD lamb and the, like if Dak gets hurt in week <laughs> four or whatever, again, like that's just it for me. Like I'm probably yeah. almost close to drawing dead on having a profitable best ball season, unless I get like a backdoor Cleveland Brown stack through or something. Right. Mahomes gets hurt and it's not even obviously your Mahomes, but like, I mean, I have so much Kelsey Hill, CEH, you, you, you have these late round guys, right? We have all, you know, we have so much attachments to things that are super, super fragile that will, well, I, I definitely feel like, feel like that. <clears throat> and I think it's a little bit of selfish, like pushing content. And I prefer the tournaments and the strategies around the tournaments and stuff like that. And obviously that the potential for a big, a big ROI, you know, exists in these, in these tournaments. And there's only, if there's a finite amount of time that I have, right. I'm right. already spending far, far too many hours drafting these teams. I want, I kind of want to have some, some upside in that. However, your point is like, couldn't be more true that if we're literally in the like gambling space, basically, you know, that's what I'll call sports speculation, right. Isn't that right. what CSU calls sports speculation? If, if we're picking like a, a format and like a site or whatever that is still ex like the edge is absolutely absurd right now, like go to FanDuel and draft and, you know, like the sit and goes on on FanDuel. And if you have any idea what you're doing, like you're just going to absolutely print. Um, and so I think, you know, that's a lesson learned for me for next year that be kind of be willing, uh, especially maybe earlier on in the year when when I do have a little more time to to invest some money in some of these because it's like a, it's like a, a really high yield cd <laughs> you know what i mean right. like it's just it's just like free money and i guess that i could be doing them as slow drafts but i just really hate the slow drafts <laughs> like i i don't find it to be enjoyable at all like i'm in because i i registered for all those puppy two drafts thinking they were fast drafts right at the end <laughs> so i'm in like i'm in like 12 slow puppy drafts right now and i'm just like i wish that these were not on my screen like i log yeah. in to i log in to go do a fast draft you know this morning or whatever and i got you know my stupid puppy draft sitting here and i'm like this is awful like i hate looking at this but i i'm i don't know about you i'm starting to feel the time crunch like i'm like man yeah. i have 
I don't know if I've drafted enough teams. I'm starting to like, I have my first main event draft on Monday. Mm. I've got another main event draft on Wednesday. I think I have five main events scheduled in total. And like, you know, you need to be locked in for those. And that, that, yeah. that would normally be time where I would be doing underdog drafts, like, you know, nine o'clock at night, I fire up a couple before bed and like, you know, it's, it's kind of getting to the point of where we're, we are up against the start of the season. what we're like 20 some days away from the start of the season mm -hmm. right now. Like it is, it is getting close. And I, yeah, like it just, it feels like you're, you're sitting there drafting for most of the off season. You're like, I can do this forever. I'll never, <laughs> I'll never be able to, I'll never get sick of this. I'll never be able to draft enough teams. And then you're like, shit, like I really got to start drafting teams now. Yeah. I mean, I'm over 500 drafts like like you know across each, each i haven't maxed anything but uh, uh across all the different sites i'm over 500 and and I, i'm having to figure out like i yeah there's a very finite amount of time for me to be able to draft i you know i can't draft 24 hours a day where am i going to spend my time and and spend my resources which kind of goes back to like what we were kicking off this conversation with that you were saying like you think you you made a mistake and i actually have have pivoted a little bit to spending a lot of time on DraftKings, especially now that they're launching more contests. Um, you know, they launched their own $5, which is that people got mad because it's a typical DraftKings payout structure with 33%. Who cares, of, yeah, Who cares? I, I mean, you're, you're playing for a lottery ticket. Like if you, if you really actually care about the difference between 12th and seventh place in one of these, like, I feel like you're really going about this the wrong way, but well, it's just, it's like the difference <clears throat> is, um, like if you're really that worried about the small edges, you should be playing like the 12 mans, the six mm -hmm. mans, the three mans, because uh, actually uh, James Briacombe, I probably said his last name wrong. He's, he's Eagles, Eagles with three yeah. Z's. He's <laughs> drafted like 2000 teams this off season. And he does, he grinds the three mans. He grinds the six mans. He grind baseball when underdog had it. He grinded yep. NBA. Like he's like a, a structural drafter. And I would bet that, why he's grinding those, you know, those three mans and those six mans is because those are, you're going to realize your equity so much more often. in those versus like, I mean, you and I, and, and Pete, you know, like we could be drafting the most structurally perfect teams, all the best players. And we still might not realize our equity, even if we're doing everything right process wise, because the, these tournaments are so big, like puppy three is gigantic, dude. Like I could be drafting, teams that are nuts, like just have all the good players, you know, Don Peoples Jones breaks out and Daryl Henderson is a running back one and Trey Lance starts week one. And I still might not get a team through to the final because it's so big. And you like yeah. the thing you might, you might need Donald Parham might score three touchdowns in week 16. And that will be the guy you need. Like he might be the win rate player. And if your team doesn't have him, like, well, good luck. Yeah. It's, it, I, I think, you know, we do talk about constantly like Herzig's team that got, got through last year, even last year in uh, what this, especially now compared to puppy three. I mean, puppy three is what 10 times bigger than the contest last year, at least like five times. Yeah. Or something. It's just so much bigger than that, than even best ball mania one or whatever it was called last year. And even in a much smaller contest, right. He like, he almost got wiped out with the, with basically the nuts, right. He, he, yeah. he almost got wiped out bef before that. Um, you know, he, and, and then it happened to work out. He, he had just good enough of a team in week 15 to sneak the Kamara team through while all the other Kamara teams got, got wiped out. Now take that and magnify it times what, it, however, you know, there's, there's so many more teams and there's going to be so many more permutations of all the nuts, right? Whoever is the digs of this year, whoever is the Jefferson, the Dalvin, uh, Kelsey, whatever, like there's going to be so many of those teams and they're going to be absolutely mutant level, <laughs> level teams. And so, like you said, it's just going to be like, yeah, who is your round 16 guy that happens to score three touchdowns in that week to get, you know, to, to win it for you? I don't think people realize exactly, you know, how absurd it's going to be. And now we have all these different contests. We have all these different contests. And so I am trying to focus a little bit more on DraftKings than I think I initially would because, like, I posted a, a, a joking tweet, but it actually isn't really that that big of a, a joke. Like, the, the the greatest difference you can, you can perceive between – underdog and DraftKings <clears throat> and why I'm trying to spend a lot more time on DraftKings right now is like when people are posting some feedback about an underdog draft, they're like, Oh my God, look, this guy screwed up in my draft. He took Adam Thielen 10 picks ahead of ADP. And you're like, Oh damn, what an idiot, you know? 
And then you go to DraftKings and somebody's posted, oh, my God, look at this draft that I'm in. Some guy just took Kyle Juszczyk in the second round. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Like like people make such egregious mistakes. And and so just your, your, your the equity on every single team on DraftKings is just huge compared to underdog, even though like I love the underdog product. I still want to play on underdog. It's just the finite amount of time thing. Yeah. And I mean, right. So right now it is that finite amount of time thing that's playing into it for me because I can, at the same time, I can do five drafts, right? Like I can wake up, can take the dogs out, hop in one, make my coffee, you know, go to the gym, do my thing, be there for an hour and a half. And while I'm there, I can knock out five, six drafts where like, just because of the mobile interface, yeah. you cannot do that on DraftKings because it's a little <laughs> clunky. Get it. Well, it's just a little clunky getting in and mm-hmm. out of the draft. The notifications are like 10 seconds late. And I'm not even saying this to disparage DraftKings. Like they're not a best ball platform. It's not what they care yeah. about. Like it's just a customer acquisition tool for them. So it would make sense that um, like underdog is all in on best ball. So it would make sense that their product would be the best. And, you know, we love underdog. I'm not going to stop drafting there. Mm-hmm. I actually think the, um, them launching this five dollar for all of us to play in is like honestly it's it's almost pure benevolence because i they i mean it's not like they're not making money on it but it is certainly impacting the fill rate of the big dog it is impacting the fill rate of best ball mania um and i didn't i i was telling people in pete's discord i was like there's not a third puppy coming like there's just they're just not going to do it. it's too close to the season um they want to fill the bbm and i i mean i've never been so happy to be wrong (laughs) because Basically having $5 drafts available means that I can draft indiscriminately. Like my ROI, even if I have a bad season, my, my ROI would be like maybe minus 50%, right? And if like, if I'm, because I feel like I'm drafting structurally intelligent, I've never had a losing season in best ball because if you're good and you're following good structure and you're like, you're never drafting dead teams, um, it's hard to lose a ton, but maybe this will be the first year where I lose. And even if I do, I still feel like I'll get half of that money back, right? Yep. Um, so like I can basically draft five dollar drafts. Like, look, if I need to leverage, you know, twenty five hundred dollars and five dollar drafts, like I can live getting half of that back in six months. I can't live with what? What is the cost to max enter the BBM? Twenty five times one fifty. Um, God, I'm so bad at math. So that's that's like it, it, it's like four thousand dollars, like thirty seven hundred fifty. So like. I guess I, I guess maybe I should have just been doing this if I'm really going to have two thousand dollars in best ball entries. But uh, but also you know it feels better to do it more iteratively. Like mm-hmm. instead of being all, like I've got probably got like three hundred entries out there. I have some on drafters. I have some on DK. I have yeah. some on underdog. Um, which like v- differing ADP gives you exposure to different players and things like that. Like um, so I don't know. It's just like uh, I. But the long story short, there's I need to be drafting more on DraftKings because. That five dollar tournament is probably the softest tournament in best ball right now. And they did launch a six dollar, which is a if, if you're you know a, a payout structure uh, stickler, then uh, it is it is much better. It is you know twenty percent to first place, relatively flat. You know all things all things being equal. Um, and so and and those are I I don't know if that six dollar is going to fill, but the five dollar their five dollar is is going to fill. Um, yeah. and they, I think that they, you know, kind of the same, it's a cut, like you said, it's, it's a customer acquisition tool. They're trying to like, they know they're not going to keep up necessarily with, uh, underdog, but like, it's, it's like <clears throat> underdog is filling all these low dollar contests and the DraftKings Millie is probably not going to fill and the DraftKings five, five fifty five is probably not going to fill so they can make up for some of it with these, these small contests, but that's good. That's good for us. Cause that also gets more, you know, the casual players on, on DraftKings is less casual, you know, money is different for everybody, right? The casual person doesn't want to fire a hundred drafts into the $20 draft. And they're certainly not drafting. In the I mean, I, I don't want to fire. I don't, I, I would prefer to fire a huge number of entries at lower dollar points. Like even like, sure. Could I, could I afford max entering the best ball mania? Yes. I will probably have about $4,000 in best ball entries when it's all said and done. That, that seems like a relative to like, the amount of just because I would treat this as like disposable income. Like I'm not mm-hmm. even really treat like I'm not even really treating this as part of my DFS bankroll or sports betting bankroll or anything. Like I'm just thinking of this as like, you know, it'll be nice in six months if there's more money there. But I don't even and this is a point you've made a ton is like I don't even really know 
what my ROI would be like in these contests or what my edge even is because the field, especially on underdog has never been this good. Yeah. We've never seen this much attention and content out there for best ball. Like, like back on draft, like people were just bad. Like you, is if you drafted two, six, eight, two, and you uh, didn't draft like obviously bad picks um, and you drafted a hundred of those. Like, I just don't think you could have turned out bad ROI the way that people were playing then. And I don't necessarily see that stuff now. Puppy, puppy two, I did see it where, where every draft I was in, someone would draft a team that was totally dead. You know, they take four quarterbacks or eight running backs or, or whatever. Um, but I, I'm just very curious to see what ROIs look like for good players. Like people who like what Herzig's ROI would be this year, what James's right. ROI would be. Like, I'm very curious to see how much better the field has gotten. Like, is this going to be like a, you know, all of a sudden we woke up in 2019 in DFS and it was like, shit, like <laughs> all the good plays are 80% owned. Everyone in cash is like one V one, or you even have the same team as someone, uh, you know, random, everyone's using the same sort of content. Like I I'm very curious to see the results of those things. Yeah, I agree because uh, same, same things you, I haven't had like any, big scores in in best ball um partially because i think i made tons of mistakes in the past but even just having a, a certain level of competence even with mistakes i've i've been churning out like I, I was listening to uh uh lulls with uh you know peter and brick and he, you know brick was kind of trying to ask about like wait, what's a good roi right he's because he's a grinder he's making he wants to make money in these things and he's smart enough to see like dude there's a massive edge here but is it worth my time basically type right. of type of thing and and like nobody can really come up with like what's a good all good roi and i'm like i haven't really had any good scores and i've made more than 25 percent on my money you know in every year that i've that i played best ball and i feel like it was a huge loss you know what i mean like that's the thing right. that we're talking about or we have been to your point talking about in the in the past i don't know what my expectation should be now i'm better i believe at least that i'm i'm certainly better um uh, a better drafter both structurally and like portfolio wise just everything across across the board player you know player level analysis i'm not shoving all in on justice hill in the, in the 12th round no, you know i still think that was good i still think that was good <laughs> so i i i have sometimes i wake up in a cold sweat thinking like who which guy am i shoving all in on now that was that was justice hill or what I, I already or, know i already know the guy we're all shoving it all in on who has paths to like literally being useless is aj dylan where kylan hill yeah. plays kylan hill plays third downs aaron jones does his thing the packers are not quite as good you know they win 11 games instead of 13 games like i i'm i'm already seeing like the lulls about aj dylan playing out like it's it would not surprise me in any way and he's the guy he's the steam guy right and we're still chasing him up through the steam because it makes sense i'm not saying we shouldn't we shouldn't chase him but he was going in the more in the pollard right latavius in that in that like handcuff range that we have in all in all these drafts you know 10th 11th whatever round he used to go there now he's the guy that we've all latched on you know he, he's the the wide receiver helium from ship chasing, right? He's yeah. the running back that everybody has pushed up because everybody's like, oh my God, you know, Gretsch was right. AJ Dillon is the best pick. You know, he is he is the best pick. Now he goes in the eighth round, right? But we're still but people are people are still taking him. So um I'm trying to back off a little bit. I actually don't have as much AJ Dillon as I probably wanted to because I didn't get on board as fast as I should have. But but like I, it's like one of those I think he's a good good pick, but I don't want to keep chasing this guy that everybody that everybody else is chasing. And Again, like doubling back to this, we have other platforms, right? You draft on drafters like even more than I do, but I'm trying to mix in drafters as well. I'm actually doing a drafters stream later today. Yeah. But, um, you know, he goes later there. And so using these other sites, using DraftKings to get right, like I'm not chasing Will Fuller on Underdog either. Will Fuller was one of the biggest risers on, on Underdog. He still goes in like the 10th round on DraftKings. Like a, DraftKings is probably just going to be like, that's where my Will Fuller stand is, right? Maybe I can move AJ Dillon to, to one of these different sites or, or whatever. Um, how are you kind of, are you like thinking about diving into, to, to DraftKings or what's, what are you, what are you doing with this, you know, uh, conundrum you've put yourself in? So early on, I was, dra I maxed out the $3 on DK and then mm -hmm. I was doing like one or two of the DK millionaire a day. I think I'm up, I think I'm like 16 or 17, 18 team something like that on dk because there wasn't a five dollar option on underdog um and i was drafting in the bbm you know i was probably back like 
when there is not a five dollar option available, I was doing like two drafts a day, right? Because like, dude, I mean, the entry fees really add up, right? Like mm -hmm. they, they really do. And I'm not trying to deposit every single day on these sites, though I have been depositing a lot. Me too. On, Me too. On, uh, on <laughs> That's what I do. But it's like, uh, you know, I don't know. It's like, and you kind of have to, you have to zoom out and be like, well, how much money do I really want to dedicate to this? You know, think about ROI. I to, to answer the ROI question, I think I would feel pretty good considering how I've built my teams with so many of them being the hyper fragile strategy, so many of them being four running backs, so many of them being five running backs and not optimizing for the survive and advance strategy. I think I would feel pretty good escaping with like a 10% ROI, assuming that I don't make the final at all. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if I end up and we're sitting there in week 17 and I have a team in the puppy two final and a team in the DK $3 final or something, and I get a 10% ROI, well, then that's just like natural human emotion to be like, well, shit, I'm, I'm really, I'm really bummed because I could have had so much more money. But like, if you just told me right now, you know, you'll have good teams, you'll have some good sweats, you'll have a fair number of teams advanced to the playoff round and you can lock in a 10% ROI. I mean, I'd probably like, I think I would take that considering. Mm -hmm. and, and also, you know, there is EV and like doing all these drafts has been good for main event practice. Like I just, yeah. I feel really dialed into the player pool. Um, and there's a huge money, huge amount of money to be made there. It's been really good for content. Like more, the, the actually for the first time ever, more people are listening to the Sports Grid Fantasy Football podcast than listening to the Tape Cast, which was never the case. It was always like the mm -hmm. Tape Cast would be like ten thousand downloads an episode, and it wouldn't even be close. But now the Sports Grid show is actually getting more weekly downloads because people are so so tuned in to the best ball stuff, which is cool. Yep. And, and so like there's for someone in my position, I could maybe even justify a losing season be like, well, it had all these fringe benefits and well, I can write it off too. Right. So if I, if I, <laughs> yeah. when I, my D, when my DK 1099 comes, um, if I get one this year, I guess, we'll I guess we'll see that, that is also TBD. Um, you know, being able to write it off is actually kind of nice as well. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously not everybody's creating content or starting sites or or, or whatever. Um, but that that's that's the big thing for, for me is like this is like a long term investment. Right. Like I, and I think we all probably would agree that this space is like ins I mean, it's even more insane than I thought it was going to be. I kind of like took a took yeah. a dive into best ball early, you know, April, April, May. I kind of was like just seeing what underdog was doing. It was actually I don't know if we've talked about this. It was actually the NBA playoff uh, best ball tournament that underdog ran that just like, like light bulb went off in my head. It was insanely fun. This, so like, you know, it, it's just like a kind of the uh, playoff, you know, NFL playoff tournaments that, that people will do. Right. Except you could, you know, you're not uh, restricted to how many players from a team you can draft or whatever, you know, it's just a snake draft. And I think you drafted, eight rounds or 10 rounds or something like that. But like, you know, there's the strategy and game theory to, okay, you know, do I want the Sixers, even though they might blow out the, right. the Wizards in the first round, but I want the teams that advance, right? Because you, you need the teams that make the finals, blah, blah, blah. So there's all this, you know, and then obviously ADP, you know, like the, 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 the Sixers were falling in ADP, right? Or you could get Russell Westbrook in the last round because people were just like, well, they're obviously going to lose in the in the first round blah 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 so there was all this cool strategy around this nba playoff contest and i was like you know i had drafted on underdog i had definitely done nfl the, the year before but i wasn't some big underdog user and i found myself hooked on this game and I, like i'm like taking the dogs for a walk and listening to the low post and using everything that these guys are saying to think like okay no now in this next draft i need to take so and so in the seventh round whatever um and so it was just like holy shit this game is fun and there's so many permutations of this this game of best ball that are going to come that like this thing is, I think is going to, is going to blow up. They're onto something here. And so I just dove in and now <laughs> even I didn't foresee three puppies with the, the third one being a $5 contest with a million dollar total prize pool and draft Kings and drafters and whatever. But I think it's like, and, and it's a long-term investment for even people that are not creating content or whatever, because I think this game is only going to continue to grow and you brought up before the show that like people think this is going to go away when the season starts and you're you're you are sadly mistaken if you think that this thing is going to go away when the season starts i think there's potential for even weekly games but there's also going to be like okay week 4 underdog's going to launch a new 
contest. It's probably going to launch very early in the season, actually, so they can fill a, right. a, a, yeah. a big one, right? You know, in week one, they're going to drop the week four best ball championship. Then they're going to drop a halfway through. We're going to have playoff contests. You know, this thing is just going to continue to grow. So, um, and then other sports, right? There, there's just so many, you know, things that it's a good investment just to to, to hone it, hone your skill of this best ball game, even if you don't end up having the big score in this NFL season. And they're going to have, so yeah, you're right. You know, they'll have like a week five best ball thing that they open up, you know, fairly early on or whatever. Uh, I mean, that would be amazing. Like week five best ball, uh, you know, uh, $10, I think would be a good price point for yeah. that. You only launch, you only launch one, mm -hmm. you make it, you know, hundred K to first or whatever adequately sized. And then you just open it up and you're like, all right, like, let's go, let's, uh, <laughs> let's do it. And then, I mean, next year, I am fascinated to see what they do. Um, you know, of course, they'll they'll do BBM3. It can be even bigger. Uh, we were talking about this the other day um, uh, with Nick Rudman. Like, how big is the $5 they're going to launch next year? Oh. Like, from, from the beginning. And I think if they feel confident on the operator end that the, that the $25 will fill no matter what, which I think they should, because I mm -hmm. think the $25, is, is, it'll fill... So it's August 20th today. It's at, I think I saw this morning, it's 72%. I would imagine that it fills well before kickoff on, on that Thursday. Yeah. I would imagine, I would imagine that it will. And there are so many permutations of things they could do to make it interesting. Like absolutely massive, expand the playoff size. Um, and then you could do like, it cuts down to the playoffs in week 14 or whatever. And then it's just cumulative scoring from there. Yeah. So no more, no more weekly cut down, but basically it turns into a different tournament. That would be amazing. Um, you could start the playoffs earlier. You could start the playoffs in week mm. 10. Um, and so then you, then there's all the meta stuff of like, yeah. who has a good playoff schedule in the back half of the season, who has an early bye week Do players with early bye weeks become a value then. And it just makes it a more meta game um but that is a question i i would love to be in the underdog offices or a fly on the wall for it like how big do we make a five dollar do we think it will impact the bbm fill rate uh does how much does a DraftKings competing product because i would anticipate <clears throat> DraftKings next year will have a more sophisticated best ball product where you can check yeah. the exposures you can draft a bunch at the same time um and you know that that will be very interesting for underdog. What do you do when? Because the grinders uh, will want to be in those softer drafts like that. So that's fascinating too. And if w whatever site that can make it easier for the grinders and for the sharks to come in, right? I, I don't even know what that answer is. But talk bringing bringing up Brian, you know, Brick again. Whatever, like it's the reason why those guys don't come in is because it's not it's not worth their their time, you know, and it's right. not worth their investment. You know, it, both of those things. It's not worth parking that money in something. I mean, the ROI is definitely there for those guys. Like, that's not even a question. But it's not worth their the combination of their time and parking their money in this thing. But it, it, whatever site that can make it such an easy way for these guys to to do so, right? It's just like like the DFS cash game grinders. Like these guys aren't spending any time on that. They just we get towards the end of the slate and they just click, you know, you get close to the slate and you just click a button and it, it optimizes the bat, right? You know, or optimizes whatever uh, model it is that that they're using. These guys don't, these guys are getting sick, well, used to get sick returns. The returns in uh, DFS cash games don't really exist much anymore. But, you know, they're, they're just, it's such an easy thing for these people to invest in. And we do, you do need those guys because you need the liquidity from like at a certain point, like they want to run these huge contests. And we haven't reached that point by any stretch of the imagination where we won't be able to fill some of the, the insane contests they'll have next year. But we are going to reach a point where like people don't want the sharks, right? Yahoo just launched like their shark free, which they think is a good idea. I and mean, it's not really a good idea, but like you do, you need those, like we need eventually we're going to need brick in, in, in best ball. If we want it to be as big as we want it to be an underdog is going to need some of those, those guys too. So there's this weird balancing act between like, we need to keep it reasonable. Obviously we want the people to have fun and enjoy, but we want to grow, we want to grow this thing. And I think we're looking at like, I mean, how, what's the total price pool on all these contests that underdog is going to fill. I mean, they're probably not going to fill the big dog, but you know, 3.5 million, uh, plus a million yeah. plus two, one million, 
So four and a half million plus half. So about just a hair over five million dollars. So more than more than five million dollars. I mean, what that's going to double or triple or something like that next year. So they're going to run the the main best ball mania might be two million to first place or a million and a half to first place. Or they might still keep it at a million for marketing purposes. But like you said, we're expand. You know, we're we're expanding a lot of things. Maybe we can create a different payout structure. Whatever the possibilities are, are are huge. But you know, just kind of doubling back to, to what we were talking about originally, like where this whole space is going is, I mean, it remains to be seen, but it's still on a rocket ship. We haven't even, le- we haven't even really lifted off the, uh, the, the space station, but like there's that, that means that some of these places are like some of the greatest ROI that we can find in, in gambling, right. Whether it's, you want to grind the fan duel. I mean, people are taking like three, like, there's like three quarterbacks going in the first round on fan of drafts on, on FanDuel. It's like it's like it's like 2001 fantasy football drafts on on FanDuel. And then DraftKings is you know is is uh, super soft, and Drafters is like kind of like in the middle. It's not as soft as DraftKings, but I like the format differences, and I think it's not as sharp as I, as I underdog. Love it. It, it, if I was if I was creating a game, I would create it the way they did it because that's more aligned with like kind of how I'm thinking about things with just like, I just want to draft as many good players who I think have six Mm -hmm. ceilings as possible. But like, there are going to be like, for example, the winning team on underdog might be a losing team on drafters because they didn't have enough total points. Right. And the guys just turned it on at the right time. Like um, I actually think Alvin Kamara was not on the winning team on drafters last season. If I remember Dalvin. correctly, it was Dalvin, right? Cause Dalvin was beating him like the whole year. It's just Kamara had the one spike at the end. Well, because I finished third and I finished, <laughs> I, I finished third with six bills players on my roster. I had Josh Allen, Devin Singletary, Steph Diggs, John Brown, Isaiah McKenzie and Dawson Knox. And that is, that would not have been a good strategy on underdog because i think if i remember correctly the bills had a really bad week 15 or 16 game where they they did like nothing on offense um let let me go look so that i can confirm this yeah because i had it just while you're i had a bills team make the semi-finals or something like that like my my best team was alan Diggs, not as many bills as you but but same thing but i died like to your point i died off because the bills tanked in the playoffs so it was the, it wasn't like a bad game, but against Denver in week fifteen, they they got a defensive turnover, and so Josh Allen had a great game in that game. He had four total touchdowns, but in that game, Diggs didn't score a touchdown, and it was uh, Dawson Knox and Jake Kumaro who scored the touchdowns. <laughs> so it just it just like Allen was still good, but Diggs and half PPR had like 19 points in that game which is like a good game but not a great game you know um so that would be an example of like Diggs and Allen in a cumulative scoring was like the total nuts and I I think those were like the best picks of fantasy football last year they didn't end up on the winning team because of the way things are laid out on underdog and I I this is not meant as a disparagement to the underdog product at all like clearly I love it I shill it every day and I'm I'm on there every day but um like I, 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 it's also cool to have the multiple options. Like mm-hmm. it would be amazing if underdog gets big enough. And part of it is what do people do in season? Like they, you know, they have their pick them games and they have their other contests. Like, are they able to retain a lot of those users? Are people still on the platform once the season starts that will, I think, determine how much they're willing to launch these other contests. Cause if you think about it, you know, we talk about, DK using the best ball tournaments as a customer acquisition tool. Well, that's kind of the same way that underdog is using them. You get people on the platform via best ball mania, you get people on the platform via the puppy. And then they're in, you know, I I'm sitting here on my phone and uh, I want to go play the, uh, the major league baseball pick them game. Right. So like, uh, or, or the preseason Patrick Mahomes over under pick them game or, or whatever. And like, those are, those are other ways to keep people engaged on the platform of, you know, and of course, you know, we'll be doing content for those things. And if those things go off, if if people stay on the platform and playing those, I mean, they could do whatever because it's just a way to get people to deposit on the site. I mean, they could do a a cumulative final and a playoff final. Like they could do, they could run both concurrently. Yeah. Like you said, they're just acquisition 
tools to get them into something that uh, a, a game or a, a platform that they can then churn them through. Right. Ultimately, the ceiling is still extremely capped in, in best ball from a from a business perspective because you're only you're you know you're getting whatever 10% of you know you're getting $350,000 that one time a year and then you know each season you're getting these these you know small buckets of of rake that you're making on the contest but what you really want to do is then bring those guys in and, and churn them out churn 10% over you know on all these guys action every single day or get, right? or get them to play or get them to play your sports betting game where yeah. A lot of people will lose, which yeah, is, exactly. I love I love underdog, and people don't love. I mean, people don't love to call out the harsh realities of how sports betting works, but that's just <laughs> the way it is, right? All the people uh, I'm not going to name any names, but posting their their underdog parlays, you know, uh, come check out my over on Ramondre Stevenson and over on Jalen Hurts. Ramond- the- Ramondre Stevenson overs are like the most winning bet in the history of of uh, the sport right now. You can't you can't lose. I mean. I think probably like I mean it's gonna work on me. Like I'm sitting here looking at this like shit. I don't know. I probably do. I too probably want to bet the over on uh, McCole Hardman receiving yards and like this rivals game they have is really cool. Like I I actually am kind of looking at this for the first time and I'm kind of into it. It's very slick looking. Um, so there you go. There is there is the customer acquisition tool working uh, in real time. And if people are, are actively engaging with that in the season and they have a more reliable revenue stream, like that's amazing. Like having a reliable revenue stream means that, you know, cause again, another thing they could do is they could launch the rake up on us is the rake is 10 and a half percent right now. Mm-hmm. If they decide like, look, yeah, we can get, people are hungry for the best ball. We could charge 15% rake and I mean, look, I'll be honest, if they charge 15% rank, I'm not going anywhere. So, you <laughs> yep. know, Jer- Jeremy, if you're listening to this and you want to run a puppy with 15% rank, I'm going to be your customer. Like, you're not chasing me. I like, I played enough on DraftKings to play 15% rank. Like, it's, it's not, it's not chasing me out of the game, you know? <laughs> DraftKings has warped our brains where, like, we, the, like, this game is just a part of our lives now, right? DFS and now best ball. It's just a part of our lives. Like, DraftKings just continued to hike the rake up and people would, people love to complain. I mean, people just want to complain. It's like, shut up. You're still playing DFS. Like, you know, I guess it's fine to post it out there. So, DraftKings, I mean, but also DraftKings doesn't give a shit about about what everybody thinks you know they 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 have the data they know that people are going to play and the same thing same thing with underdog i will say underdog is very customer focused they do a really really good job sure. of 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 you know obviously anything that jeremy does and the whole team that he has over there um they do a really good good job with all that so i feel confident and they're not going to just you know rake us over the coals uh, no, no, I don't, I don't think I don't think they will do that. Like that's that's not what but I'm they saying. Could, I'm just saying I'm just saying they could. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying they could, and I don't think it would have. Maybe it would have a marginal impact on the fill rate of the twenty five dollar because guys, mm-hmm. there are guys who would be like, I can't, I can't beat this structure. Who did pump in one hundred and fifty entries and who would not pump in one hundred and fifty entries if the rake was fifteen percent? But honestly, even I doubt that. Like yeah. Herzig's still pumping in one hundred and fifty. You know, Leone and Drew, they're still pumping in their teams. Like, it's not going to its not gonna stop anyone I know. I mean, maybe, maybe. I mean, I, I think until we have any sort of understanding of what the edge actually is, like, I think everybody that's really grinding this, like all of us believe, like, we wouldn't be – I wouldn't be doing it. Like, I'm in search of the edge, right? Like, I even talked to um, Bryce, you know, third and schlong on, on Twitter and on all the DFS sites. I kind of asked him, like – he did like an AMA on Twitter and he was like, you know, uh, I, like what markets or what spaces are you most bullish? And, you know, he's a super sharp guy that has grinded the DFS edges for, for a long time. And he was basically like, you know, I'm not, he's like, I'm starting to dabble back on DFS. He's like, I haven't been playing, but I'm starting to dabble back in DFS, but I'm playing tournaments. He's like, because the, just the edges don't exist in, in cash games at, at higher stakes. He's like, of course, you know, in the $1 contests or whatever, you can still grind out, but you can't grind out obviously enough raw, raw dollars to, to really matter. But that's the point is like, that's why I'm like really heavily investing in this whole, this whole best ball thing, because I do believe this is the space that has, that has, I mean, we just talked about, look at some of the DraftKings drafts that happen. Look at what happens on FanDuel. If you want to grind cash games, look at, look at even sometimes on drafters, even very occasionally on, on underdog, right? There's just like horrible, horrible drafts. And that just doesn't exist in any other space of gambling. And so I'm, I'm like, 
I'm trying to maximize that as much as I can because it's not going to last. You know, it's not, just like everything. Eventually, smart people come in that can beat the game far better than I can beat the game, and they're and they're going to come in and take it over. I mean, Osimo's already doing best dra drafting best ball. Osimo's going to max all, all all of these. these yeah, contests. he's going to have the know. nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, you know that I was thinking about this. One thing that does make best ball different than the cash game paradox is you do not have access to the same players. Mm, yeah. So actually having better projections and actually having better information, I wonder if it does, if it's harder to grind the edge out of 12 man best ball leagues than it is out of, you know, 100 man 50 fifties in NFL, because like go, go to go, eat week one, right? We have the fewest amount. We have the least amount of information, but we feel the most confident with that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, and we you go, uh, when, when it comes time, you know, September, open up your, your week one DraftKings cash game lineup in, in the 10, a uh, $10, 50, 50 count, how many guys in your lineup are over 50% owned. Right. And it's like, it literally the performance of Elijah Moore is the guy who's three K right mm -hmm. on, on DK literally yeah. Elijah Moore score does not matter. He could, he could, right. uh, get hurt first play of the game. And it really, it's going to impact the the EV of your lineup by like cents because he is going to be so popular. Or, mm -hmm. you know, if some running back gets hurt, right? If Joe Mixon rolls over on his ankle before the start of the season, your Samaj P. Ryan, his score doesn't matter. But that will not be true in best ball because in the individual contained 12 man leagues, Osimo cannot take Samaj P. Ryan if you already have him, right? Yep. Um, so, you know, we talk about how in DFS actually having like good ownership project or good projections matters, but it doesn't matter that much. And it's wasted time to try and get your lineup to be, uh, you know, the absolute perfect to the decimal projection. Mm -hmm. And you, you actually, your time would be better spent working on really good ownership projections and really good Sims for tournaments. But that that is not true in NFL best ball the way it exists right now. Like you actually, if you had the absolute nuts season long player projections, that would make you better at the game. Like you you would have a better mm -hmm. ROI yeah. as a result of that. Yeah, because every every you know little advantage of that projection that you gain over your your opponent actually, like you said, d does matter because they don't have access to you know not everybody has access to christian mccaffrey right so how do you still turn out a, a profitable roi when you know your expectation is you're only getting what 8.3 percent of your teams are going to have christian mccaffrey how do you still make money when when christian mccaffrey is the nuts or dalvin is the nuts or whatever and you only have them on x x percent of teams well it's projection right it's winning every other round you know it's win and it's winning later rounds like you said it's winning P Ryan, it's winning through structure, or whatever, and it's winning over. It's got to be winning over like volume, right? Like because yeah. you know inherently you're only going to have eight percent Christian McCaffrey teams. A, you need to make sure that you get eight <laughs> percent. You know, you, you like if you're if you're under Christian McCaffrey, like you need you need to be able to get the requisite percentage percentage of all those best projections. And the only way you do that is by doing as many drafts as, as you can and letting you know just letting math work itself out for you but also it's like i'm only going to have eight percent cmc how the hell am i going to make money at this thing when i don't have the best the best plays on on all my teams it's just winning you know through structure and skill over a large large quantity and i think that's why i like um i haven't even you know, kind of going all the way back to some of our original conversations i have been doing same thing as you i really like to be able to fire at these like five dollar six dollar contests frequently throughout the day because i think that's where my edge lies like it's the opposite of dfs for me for dfs like i'm a like i'm a one lineup basically kind of guy that's how i like to play it um but in this i think like i, I would just want to have as many teams as i can like yes i want I, I ideally like i would max all these contests but you know there's not that much i don't have enough time to do all that but i really just want to like extrapolate my edge over as many individual teams as I can. I understand some of them are, are going to be capped at a hundred thousand dollar ceiling or a $200,000 ceiling. And if I have that team in the $5 and it's not in the best ball mania too, like, so, so be it. But we also have the context. What do you think about, like, what are you thinking about this aspect as it pertains to these new contests versus like best ball mania? I'm not even sold. I'm going to go back to draft on best ball mania because we have these new options and because almost all my best ball mania two <clears throat> two teams happened before the cam Akers injury and like before right. michael thomas and all that 
I, I don't even know if I if I if I want to go back. Are you gonna go back and like polish off more Best Ball Mania two? Are you gonna focus on like these five dollars, six dollars, or any of the new contests? Uh, I mean, honestly, I haven't even thought that far ahead. Like, I kind of am just doing it. Like, all right, today, like I like when a puppy is available, I'm not drafting in BBM at all. So I think that's yeah. kind of like worst case scenario for like you know uh, for the underdog people. They're like shit. Like he's the exact cut. Like. I'm actually the exact customer that has the requisite like amount of money to be entering into BBM, but I'm choosing to just draft a shit ton of teams at the $5 yeah. level. Like I, I had like 45 entries in the first puppy, like 70 entries in the second, like I will have over 150 in $5 teams on underdog. And then I have like 19 teams or something like that in the BBM. So like, that's like worst case scenario for them. It's like, I'm the customer that would be drafting in the BBM. Um, my, my thought is there might be a little bit of edge in almost like as it's going to fill like 95%, 98% or whatever, and just slant with all of the updated information, like with almost mm -hmm. hyper, which you're like, why would you want to draft in a hyper efficient market? Well, if you're drafting in a hyper efficient market, that means that like your 16th, 17th, 18th round guys are, you have like good positive signal on them. Like yeah. I might actually, I know for a fact, I probably have some Daryl Henderson teams from, you know, June or whatever, when he was going in the 12th round, but like, I don't know, I might have Jalen Hurts, Devonta Smith on there, which like, I don't mm -hmm. like that stack that much. <laughs> right. I might have, I might have like horrible 18th round picks on there. Like I might have Hold like, them. You got took, yeah, you took full of them as your 18th Ty round pick. Ty yeah. Tyron Johnson. I might have, uh, I, had a sh I had a shit ton of Demarcus Robinson early and Pringle is clearly at like, Pringle has outplayed him. Demarcus Robinson mm -hmm. was like my 18th round guy for a while. And so I feel like actually drafting in that hyper efficient market at the end is we actually talk about this with DFS where like you actually don't want to be fading even in tournaments. You don't really want to be fading like 38% owned guys. Like the, the uh, uh, Brian was talking about this on Lowell's the other night. Like Every time a guy is like 40% owned at a cheap salary, it doesn't mean they're a bad play. Like you see people complain like, oh, you played Connor Joe at 38% owned, <laughs> instantly hits a home run, idiots instantly rewarded. And it's like, well, no, if you look at the context of the slate, there was an expensive pitcher. The total was really high. You know, the opportunity cost was not that great, X, Y, and Z. And I kind of think that's true for best ball mania where – and there are still inefficient ADPs, right? But it's like yeah. you're actually condensing all of the best plays because a lot of the noise has been shaken out. We're, we're not drafting Josh Jacobs in the fourth round like we were in June just because we know he's one of the guys who's going to have a backfield. Like we we feel worse about him, better about other guys. And so I, I feel like there's something to actually just putting – because if you're drafting in a hyper-efficient market, that means your team is hyper-efficient relative to projections. Yeah, so um, I've seen, I think Jack Miller put it out where, like, you know, uh, I think it was from, I can't remember which side it was, but point being, he put out, like, by draft time and, like, average total points scored for that for that best ball team, like, in April, May, June, July, August, whatever. And basically point being, because we know more, at closer to the season, you, your teams typically score more points on average as yeah. the closer you get to the season. Because like you said, your 18th round picks are better. Your 17th round picks are, you know, so you might not be getting that, that uh, sixth round pick in the eighth or ninth round, but like every pick over the collection of your entire team is typically more efficient as it relates to projection. So like your, your team is, you know, kind of, better because of this this collective idea of across your entire roster you can't build a super team relative to the 150,000 entrants in in that contest but then you also on the flip side have you know less risk of ruin obviously you know you still have a ton of risk of ruin it's NFL it's you know guys get hurt all the time but a little less right there's there's less time for the cam makers thing to happen and you're in theory which I'm starting to wonder if this is even going to be the case, at least on underdog, your competition edge is, is greater, right? I'm only drafting against you and the ship chasing guys in May, right? I'm not drafting against, you know, some random guy who wants to just throw in 25 bucks on, on, on underdog. So that was like my stance at the beginning of the year was, okay, I'm going to draft a ton early to try to, to try to get Daryl Henderson in the 12th round. 
and then I'm going to stop and let the market become really efficient and learn as much information as I can and double back at tw- like like you said when it's 90% full I'm just going to s- smash entries into it and finish off the rest but I am uh, but I didn't foresee all these other contests <laughs> happening is th- is the problem yeah, I I I did not either I did not see you know, DK, like I, I remember texting my buddy who works at, uh, I remember texting my buddy who works at DK and being like, dude, can we get a $5? Like I'm trying to, I, you know, I'm trying to, trying to spend these crowns and he, you know, he was kind of like not, he was like kind of non-committal about it. And I thought that was interesting. Like, oh, you know, they have the three, they have their 20, the five, five, five. They want, and so like, I, it is, was kind of surprising to me. And then when the first puppy filled, I started drafting a lot on drafters because I was like, you know, that's a good price point and I can just mm-hmm. indiscriminately draft these teams all day long. I like their scoring system and all of that stuff. And so it's, it's been interesting. Like I, and all of those teams will kind of be um, screenshots of like that moment in time. Like, Oh, this was yeah. the guy I was really into then. And there's like definitely value in that. Cause like, I'm not, I, as of right now, I don't have 30% of anyone. I don't think. I think the max I, I I'll, I'll check right now, but I think the max I have of anyone is I think I have Daryl Henderson at um, twenty eight percent, twenty seven percent is the is the max I have of anyone. Um, some dude tweeted at me yesterday. He had seventy five percent Gabe Davis over like eighty <laughs> BDM entries, and I was just like, "What the fuck? That's insane!" <laughs> um, but you, that could that's a way to win too. Um, and I think if you're just entering in one tournament, maybe it likes, makes a little bit more sense, but I am kind of trying to just like in a lot of drafts, like I'm trying to get my exposure to guys like, Oh, Kyle Pitts fell 10 spots. Well, this is a Kyle Pitts team or Mahomes fell yeah. to the mid fourth. This is a Mahomes Hardman Pringle team or whatever. Like I'm kind of trying to use as the draft goes to determine what my week 17 exposures will be. Yeah. And that's kind of why I brought up the, like, am I gonna, you know, focus on DraftKings or am I even going to double back to BBM? It's because of your point about like, I, I'm able to live in a specific contest with that, that, that market idea. I can still draft in this hyper-efficient market in the puppy three or whatever, you know, or sure. God forbid they launch, they launch another, <laughs> God forbid they launch another contest. Right. Um, I can chase overlay in the big dog. If you want to do less drafts, right? I think the big dog is going to overlay. I think the 555 on DraftKings is going to overlay. I can wait till close to the end and I still get that. Plus I get perks of of overlay. You know, I'm just trying to figure all of that out because I really, you know, have grown a little bit more, you know, interested in the, in this idea of, okay, I, like I, I have 100 Best Ball Mania 2 teams. They were almost all pre-Akers injury and I have like 20% Daryl Henderson on those. So like something like, you know, some of those are dead. There's a, there's a little bit of Michael Thomas, right? There's like, you, like you said, 18th round Travis Fulgham, or I was draft. I have a couple Chris Herndon teams that I, I was got, drafting I early. Some, I got some Zach Wilson, Chris Herndon, 17, nope. 18 t- t- uh, turn he, teams out there for sure. Ex- exactly. But like, you know, so I know that's a, a, a decent chunk of those hundred are dead, but a decent chunk of those hundred teams are absolutely stacked too. And I won't be able to make that up. So I'm trying to balance, like, do I just make the BBM? That's my, my hundred teams where I have this Henderson edge. And like, I know I can come back and draft in this hyper-efficient market in the BBM, but also it doesn't have to be in the BBM. There's multiple, you know, there's, there's the puppy, there's DraftKings, there's drafters. There's all these contests that like, like I said, I didn't foresee this, <laughs> this insane world that we're living in with best ball now. And so I almost feel like, like I may not, which, you know, under earmuffs to the underdog people, I apologize. I'm not trying, I'm not trying to, to besmirch, you know, push anybody away from the BBM. Um, but if you were like me, basically, I think it's an interesting thought experiment to be like, where is the best because again, going back to the beginning conversation, like I only have so much time. We're we're less than three weeks away from this thing starting. So where right. should you best? So where should I best invest? You know my time because I'm not you know a, a beta boy doing a bunch of slow drafts. <laughs> imagine, imagine being a beta boy doing a bunch of slow drafts, <laughs> and you can't even do it anymore. What what are all the yeah. what are all the beta boys going to do now? Um, I think that that might have an interesting impact on on ADP to see what happens as all the slow drafters come in. To the, I also would anticipate fill rate starting to really dramatically rise right now. Oh, yeah. Like, like, uh, let's see, let's, let's check, uh, let's check BBM right now and see how much it's filled just today. Cause I bet, um, 
I bet it has changed a little bit. Uh, Best Ball Mania is, yeah, uh, it's still at 72. So it's at uh, 113,000 entrance, max of 156. I mean, yeah, they're going to fill that no problem, which I'm very glad for them. I'm very happy. Yeah. It's amazing to see how successful they're like, because, you know, not every marketing push in the fantasy space works, right? We've seen <laughs> no. lots of marketing pushes where companies have spent this much money. They've sent their affiliate codes. They've done their whole thing. And it has just fallen flat on its face and it's not worked. Um, so it's been very cool to see. Uh, and I think they picked the right guys, right? Hayden and Josh and Pete. It's just they they did a very good job um, structuring that. Yeah. they. I mean, they've done just about everything right to, to capitalize on, on the success, whether it's the product, right? I mean, like you even talked about, like it's a pain in the ass to draft on DraftKings. DraftKings is going to fix that eventually, but they just like, this, this was just a bolt on thing that DraftKings did. They were just like, shit, we need to have a best ball product, right? Because like you said, it's, it's user acquisition. It's good. It's good. You know, putting good juju out there in the world with their, their gambling uh, space. You know, they just want to bring people into the sports book. So let's just attach on this, this best ball product to their DFS app. And it's like, you know, it's kind of like DraftKings is getting kind of out there, right? Like they got this social, they got this social product. Now they, they're dropping NFTs. They got best ball. They got, you know, so they, they, they got, they, they got a lot of crushing it, man. They're <laughs> they really crushing a, it. They are just literally printing money all because every, like you said, people come in and they just lose, lose their sports bets. All right. So, we're closing in on 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 like an hour, and and we can get out of here. I was gonna, one thing I was going to ask. I was watching the the Eagles game last last night, and 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 just coughing my 18th round Travis Fulgham teams from from earlier this year. But is there is there anything that you know you think you're going to change like over these next? You know, we are getting we are getting close. We have we're like basically this week of the preseason, and I I, I think they'll probably most teams won't play their guys. In the third one, maybe maybe I'm wrong about that, but like you know, we've seen this this market shift like absolutely crazy. And you kind of talked about you know, you even mentioned like the three running back thing. I thought maybe that was a a really interesting point. Are you thinking about doing like more three running back teams or more zero running back teams or like what's your kind of like angle now that we are in a little bit more of a hyper efficient market? I was actually wondering if drafting more boomer teams might make sense. Like actually getting some exposure to some of these guys. I literally have none of, <laughs> like I was talking to Pat the other day and I was like, I have 18% Alvin Kamara. Cause I've never taken Henry when they were both on the clock. I take Kamara over Kelsey. I take Kamara over Diggs. I take Kamara over Adams over Tyreek. Um, but then even like second round stuff, like uh, pretty much always taking Antonio Gibson over Jonathan Taylor have slightly started to reverse that. Always mm -hmm. taking CH over Najee Harris. And like, I'm mm -hmm. good with those decisions in a vacuum. But, you know, this would obviously be something that Leone would really chide me about. Like, you know, you got to be a little bit more fluid and just mm -hmm. make it more about structure. So I wonder if I should get a little bit more exposure to the, not, not the David Montgomery, Josh Jacobs, Chris Carson guys. Mm -hmm. I feel very confident with my decisions there. Like, it's better to take wide receivers or Henderson or ETN or Javante there. But like, could Nick Chubb, have the the 47 point game in week 17 who do the browns even play like watch the browns play some shit bum team in week 17 uh they play the steelers the steelers could be done this ben roethlisberger could have his arm in a sling they could be you know totally out of the playoffs and playing backups in week 17 and mm -hmm. nick chubb could just like just at, you know absolutely crush week 17 so maybe that's something um i also am just trying to get Giovanni Bernard on every team now where I, I, I was kind of splitting him and James White. And I, I feel extremely good about all the James White stuff. Yeah. I think he's going to do exactly what I thought and it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. But I actually think we've, we've had this opinion all off season that, <clears throat> that Rojo is just going to have the first and second downs in the goal line. But it kind of sounds to me like Gio might just be the dude. Like Gio mm -hmm. might be what he was in Cincinnati as a starter, like the year that Jeremy Hill left, where it's like he's getting 12 carries a game, Rojo's getting five, but he's also getting like five targets a game. 
I, I, Geo, I've been, you know, the whole like James White Geo thing was, uh, or the whole you know, main, mainly James White thing was a little bit, you know, more of a bit because it it all came from that the one the one, you know what's the fucking point of James White on this team? It all ended up stemming from that little conversation that we had on on Twitter. And I actually, you actually, I was being a little stubborn after that on on the the James White thing. And I told, I I, I think James White is still an awesome pick. Um, I agree. I feel a lot. I even feel a lot more confident in James White, although. Ramondre needs to, uh, to 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 chill out probably a little bit because um, just because no, I think dude. he, he no. I think I think he I Bill think Belichick, he could. dude. Let me let me tell you something about Bill Belichick. He does not care. Ramondre yeah. week one, believe it or not, week one. Ramondre inactive. <laughs> I, I would I would I would make it I, I would agree. make it like minus two ten. He's inactive week one. He needs he need, he probably needs not only one injury. He probably needs two. Yeah, yeah. It's just. The more I see Ramondre, and I'm, you know, I'm being a little bit of a prisoner of the moment, but somebody also posted something uh, on Twitter earlier today that basically was like, I think people don't understand how good Ramondre Stevenson is and like posted like every stop. So he was a Juco transfer to Oklahoma and like he was basically like the best Juco player in the country. He just absolutely destroyed Juco. And then he didn't get a ton of, um, you know, act, didn't play a ton of actual games and get a ton of reps or whatever at Oklahoma. But like, if you just look like on a per touch and a per game basis, he was just an absolute superstar, you know? And so um, I have, I've, I've just, he, the Patriots just absolutely pissed me off because I can tell myself a story every single day about like a, a, a different guy, even like Damian Harris, you know, like every day you could probably tell yourself a different story about the Patriots guys, but geo, I totally agree. I was drafting a lot of geo and I'm happy that I have a lot of geo, but I think, Geo um, and Chubb were two guys that you mentioned that I think are perfect examples of now that we have a little bit more information, not only about like Geo specifically, we definitely have more information about him and a real path to like a true, true smash. Like James White doesn't really have a path outside of like, what was it, 2018 or whatever it was um, to being like a true, true smash, but he can be a really, really, really good best ball pick. Geo might have a real path to like, like if you look at last year, he like, he could score two hundred and ten PPR points. I think Brady clearly did not particularly love having Rojo and Lenny as his <laughs> as his 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 running backs. I, I don't they were going to cut Lenny. They were they, they were going to cut Lenny. And and they were and they they've clearly given up on Rojo as a as a passer. You know, Rojo does some dumb stuff sometimes. He can't stay healthy. Like at, these things don't really matter. Like actually in reality, but to Tom, but to 45 year old Tom Brady and, and boomer Bruce Arians, these things do matter. So they bring in this guy that can be his trusted pass blocker. He knows he's going to catch the ball when he throws it to him. You know, he knows he's not going to fumble all this bullshit. Like that really, again, doesn't matter, but to them, it does to Tom Brady. It does. So like what happens when Gio is playing 75 or 80% of the snaps and he is getting 15 carries along with the James James White role, like this dude should be going like I mean certainly not in the fifteenth round. So so we have more information. I agree. I want to be do, using that on guys like that that aren't getting steamed, right? AJ Dillon is getting steamed, and we actually don't really have that much more information about AJ Dillon. But I have more information about Geo, and there's a real path I think that maybe I didn't even believe existed. And then your point about like like Chubb to me is I, I, I'm still not sure that I'm gonna. To, to swerve into Najee. I, I don't um, think I can. I don't like, I, I don't think I can be on the clock and take Chubb over AJ Brown or whatever. But yeah, like, that's hard. I'm pretty ready. I'm like, people are confident enough in him. I don't know. Like, I could just, I could see that one burning me real clearly. I could see, I could see being super overweight Kamara being bad. And I could see mm. being super underweight Chubb being bad because, like, being really overweight Kamara. Obviously, that means I have literally no. I have two Derrick Henry teams, and I have like very little Travis Kelsey. Like, I only get Kelsey when he falls. Um, and so, you know, there there are definitely ways that can go bad. You know, the Saints think, might just be a dumpster fire. Yeah, I, I think my thing with Chubb, why I do want to get Chubb, I need to get more Chubb on my teams. Is he's actually like the kind of player this is going to sound weird and I may even like not, uh, you know, hit, hit the point home. He's actually the kind of player I feel like is a good best ball target, even though we've dropped him in this Derrick Henry bucket. And it's because it's a very different scenario in which his ceiling outcome plays out, but it's kind of the same thing as Gibson and CEH, you know, we're wish casting a new, a, a role, 
growth for Gibson and CEH, right? That's what they need to become the legendary back. And it's it, it, it's a real possibility that that happens. And so we've made them the upside bets. Nick Chubb has this hyper efficient, like mega high floor, higher floor than those two guys have just because of what he is as a runner, what the offense is, you know, efficiency wise and, and how they run their offense through him. He doesn't have the pass game role in the cards unless Kareem Hunt gets hurt. So he has this, right. he does have the path to that legendary role. But, but he, that's the thing is he does. And it's like Jonathan Taylor, CH, like they're like, it's a wish cast, but like, I feel like the Browns could very easily give him that role. If, if Kareem Hunt yeah. got hurt, it's not, it's not a wish cast. It would just be, you know, he just needs something kind of simple to happen. It's, it's, exactly. It's a, it's something needs to happen for him. It's a very different type of thing that needs to happen for him in order for that to happen, but it, it's there. It exists. Like, that's why, like I brought up Najee, like, I don't see, like, I, I, I don't see it, you know, with, with Najee, like JK Dobbins, like, I don't see it with those guys. You know, I definitely don't see it with the dead zone guys you mentioned, but like with Chubb, it was just kind of me being stubborn, honestly, you know, he's the epitome of the high T draft, right. Him and Derrick Henry and, and, and Dobbins and Chris Carson and those guys that I just kind of like stubbornly move off of, but identifying Nick Chubb, identifying Geo, identifying some of these guys that like, Maybe I was just honestly being a bit of a robot about, you know, you get into your drafts and you got your guys, right? Like you said, right. I, I prefer yeah. Gibson and I prefer CEH. I'm definitely taking AJ Brown. I'm taking these guys, taking a little step back and being like, I think I was just being lazy with Chubb or I was just being lazy with, I don't know. Like I don't take like the Bucks receivers very much because I prefer Higgins and DJ Moore. And I even prefer the Rams. I prefer, you know, I don't take the Bucks guys very much, but it's like, dude, Chris Godwin is really, really good at football. <laughs> like I love, he's like one of my favorite players right. in, in, in the league. Why can't he have a hundred yards? I, I've had to taking Godwin over DJ Moore every once in a while, just because I don't want to be sitting there with 3% Chris Godwin in the end. <laughs> You know. Yeah, and I mean Brady. Brady's not going to run. We're just talking about we're talking about Geo. Like, like if Brady just keeps throwing for five thousand yards, like his receivers are going to be really good, and that gives them the access to the to the league. You know, to the to the league winning score that we need. Even if we're not, even if I prefer DJ Moore as a breakout, I prefer whatever. Um, I just don't want to be stubborn on on some of those guys, and I definitely have been up until this point. Yeah. Well, there we go. There That's it is. Fall podcast. That 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 is the best. That is the best ball podcast. Um, anything you got going on? You want to put out there before we end? Uh, so main event starts on Monday, so that means that my cheat sheet is done for the year. So it's got it's got all the model ranks, a, uh, NFC ADP, FFPC ADP, Fantasy Pros ADP, all in one sheet, and then I color code it by like this is guy is good, this guy's okay, this guy's bad. Uh, people really enjoyed it last year. And, uh, it, th so that's done, but I got to write the article corresponding to it. So eventually that will be out and that will be ready for your drafts pretty soon. That's the worst part. That's what I've got all the rankings and same thing. Like, uh, you know, I kind of identified the, what I would kind of call the screaming values, the core guys I want to attack on each site and the core guys I don't want to attack on each site. It's funny you brought up geo because geo is on there, um, as a, a core guy to, to attack. But then like, it's like, okay, now I got to write the corresponding article. And I'm like, I can't, well, I can't, I can't will myself to go write all of, all of these words. I need to like contract it out to Gretsch or something, you know, you need, need to like bring, like, will you do the analysis? I don't feel like writing 2000 words about, like doing to, it. <laughs> about this yeah. thing. Um, only thing if you, uh, this won't, I guess this, this won't be out, but by the time you're, you're watching this go double back, I'm actually doing a draft uh, stream here in a half hour on drafters. Um, Davis has talked about plenty. Like, I think it's a really, it's nice to have a different format and a, a you know, different, different ADP environment kind of right in the middle between DraftKings and, and uh, underdog. I think drafters is, and then the, the format is so, is, is actually so different that I don't think people are efficiently drafting for, for the format differences between drafters and the other sites. So I wanted to start fire up some, some streams there and, and uh, uh, I'll have, you know, the promo codes and all that fun stuff going on there, too. But uh, for for Davis, make sure you follow Davis Matic on Twitter at Davis Matic. And uh, until that, we'll, we'll talk to you guys next week.